Hello everyone, hope you all are having a wonderful day. My name is Yotes, and I'm submitting several categories of Lightfall uh, to the upcoming SGDQ. Uh, the first one, and the one we're going to be running today, is uh, any percent. So, Lightfall it was released in 2018 by a five-man Canadian uh, company known as Bishop Games. Um, they designed Lightfall sort of with the idea of it being a speed game. As you can see, it has its own uh, speedrun mode here, and that's what we're actually going to uh, run the game on, as opposed to the story mode. So, it's very unique in the way that they, they designed this mode for us that skips all the cutscenes, uh, turns off all the dialogue, and removes a lot of the RNG elements in a couple of the boss fights. And, um... I think there's one example in um, the level Sylveon uh, where there's a riddle where normally you'd have to read the text and select something and select the uh, the corresponding panel but now it sets up the panels in a specific order but we'll see we'll see when we get there um, there's a lot going on in this run so I'm gonna try to my, do my best to explain some of the more basic preliminary stuff um, before going into the run. Um, oh, yeah. Like, a lot of the, um, platformers, uh, that were released in 2018, like Celeste, and, um, another one that comes to mind is, uh, Semblance. Sort of, each of them has to stand out on the market in its own, uh, unique way, and the way Lightfall does that is, um, uh, by giving you control of this object that you can actually, you can see here, uh, the shadow core, and I'll explore. Exp we'll just uh, start run to explain that. So uh, timing will start uh, when I select the file, or I, I'm I, I'm gonna compare it to a file just because. But yeah, timing starts when I select the file. Um, so yep, this is Act One. The game is divided into four acts. Um, but first, you'll probably notice instantly I'm summoning blocks below my feet, which technically should be cheated. Um, but that's sort of the innov that's the innovative mechanic that this game has. We can uh, do four different things with this box called the Shadow Core. Uh, the first one you see here, and you will see a lot of in this run, is we can summon this uh, this box below our feet, and it acts sort of as a uh, quadruple jump, which is really awesome. Um, and there's three other things we can do it. One, you'll see right here, uh, actually get rid of our, uh, to shift the block below our feet with an attack, which will also function to do damage to enemies or break crystals, um, but it's more commonly used to sort of stall ourselves in the air by summoning a block below our feet and quickly getting rid of it. Um, uh, there's another block that we that functions sort of as a shield or a wall jump uh, that we summon on the side of us, and then there is one more that sort of puts us in this kind of precision aim sort of stationary mode where we can manu uh, maneuver this block at, at will, which is useful or not useful, necessary in some cases um, to uh, interact with objects. Uh, but we'll only, because it's really slow as it puts us in that stationary mode, we will use it um, only when we have to. But upcoming, this is the biggest skip of the run. Uh, it's called Mazeless. Uh, took, a took me a second to get it, but uh, we got it. Uh, it skips having to go underneath this level and go through a particular part that sort of acts as a maze. And by going above the level, we can sort of continue moving uh, towards the right, towards our goal here. Uh, and that saves about, like, I think, 20, 30 seconds, which is really nice. Right, there we go. Uh, now we're moving on. Again, this, game, this game goes very fast. It's very hard to keep up and explain everything uh, in the detail that I want to. But this is the... Each act has its this boss level in, at the end of it. Uh, this is Lost Lagoon, this is Act 1's boss level. You'll see here, for just a brief second, there's a boat. We're supposed to take this boat the whole way through the level. But, 
it's faster not to. Which is kind of a shame, actually, because the boat was probably the coolest part of the casual playthrough. It just felt... It took away from the basic platforming and made it sort of stand out as, you know, something different. But that's fine. We're not going to use it because we want to go fast. Um, okay, that's... That's sort of the whole gimmick of this level, and we, we don't even use it. <laughs> I, I think it's very amusing. Um, already, it goes, by, it goes by so fast. We are... Um, we're moving on to the boss. Uh, this is Animus's temple. There is a seahorse in here that is trapped for whatever reason. And we want to free him because, you know, we're a nice guy. We're having a good day. Uh, more mechanically... There, I just did something called a um, uh, death abuse, self destruct, checkpoint reset. I will probably use all three of those names interchangeably throughout the course of the run, so <laughs> please don't get confused. Um, but what that does is it abuses the fact that when we die here, that wave, which you see in front of us, uh, will start at a very specific position. Because. Um, but by dying before hitting the elevator, um, as I as I did, we can regard we can position the wave in the same spot, regardless of you know the global cycle on the level before uh, entering the temple, and get the same boss fight every time, which is really nice. And it uh, doesn't take any time at all. Um, and I'll, I'll explain Cyclone and uh, Death Resets and um, in-game time and in, in, in due time, but this is Act 2. We have more prevalent things to talk about, like new mechanics. Um, you'll see here there are these seeds and these slimes that sort of give the level a very desolate, dingy swamp feel. Um, and it's, you can even hear in the music, it's a very depressing level. <laughs> oh god, that's an awful death. But probably one of my favorite acts mechanically, and you'll see at the end of this level, there's a very, um, oh wow, a very difficult, and very flashy skip that we're gonna go for. Um, which we might get there, <laughs> not not at this rate. Um, but yeah, now my global cycle is all screwed up. Um, and that's yeah important to mention. Every, each level has a global cycle in these slimes, seeds, moving platforms in the last level the fish and the um, so the spinning platforms were all on the same global cycle um, it, it would work sort of as you'd expect a global cycle to work but now we're moving on to one of my favorite sections of the run, this is the laser shaft is it? Uh, just watch it real quick, and then I'll explain it. Yeah, there you go. So, we skipped all of those, all those elevators there. Um, now, the Shadow Core moves around in a very weird way, which allows us to do that. And you'll see, it's very subtle, but you'll notice that the Shadow Core moves with us, but it only like solidifies as a solid object when uh, we end up making contact with it. And we, um, okay. Um, that was awful. Um, oh my god, uh, no, no, please don't, I'm just gonna run off at me. Okay, um, no, I'm just distracted. I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this. completely forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> it solidifies and then Oh, so yeah, we can summon our we can summon our block. Um, most prevalently the the shield or the wall jump block. And we can move with it by summoning it into the direction that we're facing and then turning around and it will it will follow us. And in the case of the third laser skip, which at this point is long gone. Um we can block the lasers as we, you know, independently climb the uh, laser shaft. But it's really precise to do in midair, um, which is why we only, um, it's really only possible, or 
you know, we'll, use, we'll say feasible, not possible, to do one running on keyboard and mouse. Or there's, no, there's no mouse. Um, so I'm the only runner who runs on keyboard, but it is the because of these those laser skips, this faster input method by a very, a, not very significant margin, like three to five seconds. That is if you want to do the laser skips in the first place. Um, what, what am I doing here? Okay. <laughs> But yeah, that's very bad. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're managing them. Not too, not too bad. We're hanging in there. But yeah, we're nearing the end of what has shaped out to be a very miserable act two. Um, this is the Temple of Miklin. Uh, there's a lot of very difficult tricks and um, using very. Um, I think unique, or not unique, um, or creative way of using the mechanics that are presented, presented to us. So, we'll see, we'll, going through here, we're going to move in a way that sort of narrowly avoids, um, all these, uh, slime shooters. And then coming up here is another instance of a, uh, a death of use. Because that checkpoint that you can barely see up the, uh, top triggers much further down than it should. And we can use that in conjunction with the in-game time uh, to end up saving time. And up here, here's another laser skip. There we go, first try, that's always good. Uh, there you go. Yeah, no, more, just more instances of using these shield blocks. It's a lot more... It makes the game a lot more technical because it's very subtle, but it's very important in the grand scheme of things. Um, yeah, the hard, really, I think the hard part's over. Um, and now we have the boss of Act Two. This is Miklin. He's a giant, hungry vacuum cleaner um, that like gets his nutrition off of rocks and poisonous gas that we're about to shove in his face. So, there you go, now he's gonna grow some nice parasites, and that's what he gets for eating everything that, uh, his mouth. It's an auto scroll we shoot crystals, free donations, that's, that's about it. We're gonna give him a nice dose of the blue. Yeah, these crystals are on a timer. The platforms are random. Not, not, nothing, nothing else going on here, really. Um, this is one of the things that was changed. Uh, the speedrun mode as opposed to the story mode. These crystals normally would spawn in a random pattern, but in an attempt to remove RNG from the speedrun and make it more ideal as a speed game. Because, let's face it, most runners do not like RNG. The crystals will spawn from the bottom to the top. And now, we are gonna, this is called a cycle manip, doing these self-destructs here on this checkpoint. Um, you'll notice that the in-game timer uh, does not move when uh, Nox, the character that we're playing as, is dead. But the global cycle will keep moving, you know, independently of whether or not he's alive. So, we can self-destruct, and as we're respawning, have the in-game timer paused, but the cycles will stu still move around us, so we can, uh, have some fancy setups in order to, um, go a little faster. Although it is slower real-time, it, um, the leaderboards are based off of the in-game time, and I don't know what I just did there, but I don't like it. So, yeah, you'll s well, you, you probably you won't see it now because of the um um little, little screw up I had there. Yeah, this level, I like to think of this level as the calm before the storm, because the upcoming six levels all have very tight, difficult tricks. But this level, we're just sort of running and jumping. You know, there's nothing. 
There's nothing, you know, terribly difficult about it. Why, why did I open my mouth? Of course. Um, what am I doing? The minute I say, oh, it's, it's not too difficult. It's not too bad. That that's the moment I die. <laughs> Karma's a jerk. Let's try this. Alright, there we go. Well, a little easier this time around. Or a little better this time around. Dying on the easy stuff, that's always fun. But this is what I'm talking about as far as that level being the calm before the storm. Instantly we a fairly precise uh, jump called Bird Skip to set up a cycle here. There we go, we got it. Um, and that's going to allow us to jump off of one of these spinning pl uh, platforms as the spikes are facing down which allows us to take a nice little shortcut up here um, to a part of the level that has no ceiling. And we can just climb up here, and we're out of bounds. Um, oh, that's not good. Um, yeah, blind movement's always difficult when you screw it up. But yeah, again, no ceiling, and we're just walking on the ceiling of the level. And it puts us out right by the end. So, unfortunately, not the cleanest uh, forest out of bounds, but it, it works. I'm not complaining. Yeah, a nice short and sweet level. And now a nice, not so nice, very long level. We, uh, I and Sylveon, we go way back. Um, a lot of resets. A lot of resets. And a lot of lost runs uh, here. Um, uh, this is the boss level of Act 3, and we have to collect five keys and return them to this big door in the center. Which isn't so bad, except for the fact that when you die with one of the keys, um, it goes back to its original position. And because we want to save time, we only want to have to go to the door once. So we're going to have to carry all five keys to the door at the same time. And there's this three minute period that if I die, the, the run's over. There's nothing I can do to salvage it. Um, there's a trick there. Um, I, w I wanted to try and jump through the um, crushers without waiting, but I missed it. Uh, it's um, called Time Cycle Skip, which um, at the highest level of running is kind of it's kind of a coin flip because it's so precise that you know the how long you stall for to try and set up your speed value to get through the gate very thin. So this is kind of a uh, coin flip on whether or not your run uh, gets past there. Which is rather unfortunate because it, it saves around 5 to 7 seconds. Which is a lot of time um, at the highest level of running. But, uh, that's the, uh, this part here is probably the most perilous. Um, these lasers kill you on contact. And it's really easy when you're someone who's very, you know, trick or happy like me to jump too early or get off of your block too early and boom, you hit a laser, you just lost two minutes. Your run's far from a on world record pace. I don't know what I was going to say there. Um, anyways... Up and coming, there is a section with a lot of large flashing lights. So, I, if you have, I recommend now. If you have, um, you know, you're prone to seizures or epilepsy or um, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll 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 tell you when it's you're good to open your eyes again. But yeah, this is just it's just an, another climbing section with moving platforms. But yeah. Alright, and yep, you're good. Anyone who had who had to open, close their eyes, you're good to open them I probably could have said that 2,000 times better. Uh, but here's the riddle I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Um, where is it? Okay. 
Um, there's a consistent pattern. There we go. We got through Sylveon, no deaths, thankfully. And we're gonna put all five keys in the door. And we're good. Here, give me one. Give me one second. That's the that's a convenient thing about uh, in game time. Right, sorry, just need to respond to an important text. Um, but conveniently there, I can uh, do a a cycle when I run this level, which um, what am I trying to say? Um, Anyways, this is Act 4. This is uh, the first level in Act 4, the Giant's Mouth. Um, the rest of this level... Not, not this level. I, I said, I've done that too many times today. The rest of this game is going to get very crazy as far as tricks. You know, they're all based around needing to be on a specific cycle, or trying to get a specific cycle in order to save time. Um, and that's what we're doing here. And it makes it particularly tricky because these orbs aren't the friendliest things on the, the planet. Um, you'll see there's, they come in two, uh, two colors, teal and red. The teal ones are slower and steadier. Um, and we can usually use, uh, what's it called? Um, Psycho nips, thank you, <laughs> sorry. Um, to avoid them, but the red ones, on the other hand, they, their sort of cycle duration is the same length as our respawn animation, which makes them very, um, very hard to control, and we sort of just have to, to wait for them. There's no, there's not much we can do. Um, I did not think I jumped that high. Um, I th think I need. I'm gonna try and salvage the cycle here with another checkpoint reset. Hopefully, uh, I don't know. This should work. Uh, I don't. I think I'm too slow. Yeah. Damn it. Um, that this level cannot go any more wrong. Um. <laughs> yeah, we just got. We're stuck here waiting. Um. Normally you can shoot the orbs, but because of this fog, uh, it disables the use of our shadow core, and that's one of the more frustrating mechanics in Act 4 here. But yeah, that's an awful mistake. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Needless to say, if this run gets accepted, I will probably not be doing the commentary. Just because of all the little things that... Um, I've missed. All the, there's a lot of trip. There's a lot of uh, little tricks. I've tried to hit, hit the key point, the key points on the head, but uh, this is the final boss. Uh, yeah, the boss level of Act Four. Uh, th this, like Sylveon, we used to go way back before. Um, this level is just. All right, let me try again. The level's just. Ver this level is very hard as far as execution, but there's not really. Um, the cycles here are very lenient, as opposed to, uh, Sylveon, which is sort of the opposite. Like, if you know, with enough practice, like, you know, moving through the level, in my opinion, isn't that bad. But, uh, you have to really pay attention to the cycles. Missing a cycle is where you're going to lose a lot of time. Here it's sort of the opposite. Um, as you'll see, I just lost probably several seconds on that climb um, to get the first generator, of which there are three that we need to destroy to open the portal to the final boss. Um, but I still was able to make that this like, and in the grand scheme of things, I have not lost any time. Just because we'd, we would have to wait for the red orbs if we got there early. Yeah, now I'm going to uh, do nice little abuse of in-game time again by... Um, dying to pause the in-game timer while the cutscene plays. Um, I can't do it any anywhere else because uh, if I did in the first one, it would put me back to the very beginning of the level since we hadn't uh, gotten the, the main hub checkpoint yet. 
And if I did at the very end, I'd end up saw blocking. But yeah, this uh, coming off is the coolest, probably the coolest part of the run visually, if um, I can do it. I'll just follow it. it. It sort of explains itself. But we'll, we'll try it. There you go. And we sh seem to have made it up here without any problems. Yep, there you go. And that's number four. Nice. Alright. Now that's the one last level. Um, again, it doesn't let up. There's still one cycle based trick that's very precise that I'm going to go for. Just like that. There you go. It's very subtle. This level moves very quickly because of these. Uh, vertical logs back when it's like you can tell that the, the camera is struggling to keep up. Um, I almost I almost made it. Yeah, if I had gotten that it would have saved around four seconds, but unfortunately it didn't. Uh anyways, but it's not bad. I think more time to explain this. Um launch pads are very finicky. They sort of oh my god. Um they launch you in a direction relative to the way that you hit them, which, because of their shape, is not, uh, it's not very consistent all the time. But, sort of, more generally, if you hit them, um, near the bottom, it will sort of give you much, you'll get arc more horizontally and further, and as if you hit them at the top, you'll get, um, a lot more height and a lot less uh, uh, distance. Now uh, this is the last chase sequence. We're in the uh, the Celestial Palace where um, the Warlord is trying to take over the world or something. I, I'd have to brush up on the story for this game. And we're gonna... He's gonna chase us until we make him crash into a wall. And then we are... Going to gently punch him in the face, and he's gonna sort of explode. Okay. And time's coming up. Time. I should have been a little more clear on that. But yeah, there you go. That's life. Well, um, not the best run, but let's compare to this against real time, just to see. Twenty-five, twenty-three. All right. Um. Yeah, I think a safe estimate. I normally would submit it as 25 minutes. I'm not. I'm starting to think that's not a great idea. Um. Yeah, I think 26 or 27 minutes uh, would be a reasonable estimate. If it's a race, probably 30, just so I have more time to explain stuff. Um. Oh yes, if this is a race. Um. I'm not sure who all else will be submitting this game. Uh, I think Kiri and Gozengada had talked talked about submitting that, and if they do, I'd like to submit this as a, as a race. Um, I don't know. I could sit here and ramble all day and not say what I want to say. But yeah, thank you uh, for watching. Thank you to the. Um, committee the games on the submissions committee for um uh taking this game into consideration um yeah thank you for yeah thank you for your time thanks for everything you do to make gdq happen um yeah that's it for me so yeah I'll set this back to game time before i forget yeah have a good rest of your day everyone thank you